Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to film today's video. I love filming these videos. I'm sharing a bunch of amazing drugstore dupes and really good affordable alternatives to some high-end products in my collection. The truth is I love pretty much all of the high-end products I'm talking about in today's video, but inevitably as I'm testing out makeup for videos, I come across products that are just as good, if not better than high-end products in my collection. And I wanna share with you guys like true dupes that are so spot on, you wouldn't be able to tell a difference. And then a few alternatives that I might recommend over the high-end product as well. I always like sharing at drugstore and affordable options, whether you are on a budget or you just don't want to pay, you know, a high-end price tag for makeup. That's the case for a lot of people. So there are so many good drugstore and affordable products out there, and that's why I like filming these videos. I have a bunch of them, so I'll link them in the description box below, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Before we get into it, I do want to say thank you to Canva for sponsoring today's video. I am so excited to share it with you guys because I love Canva Pro. It is the most amazing design platform out there and it is so easy to use if you're anything like me and you're not a professional designer this is going to be such a great option for you because they have a tool so you can design anything from social media content to presentations at work to even things for personal use in your daily life there are so many helpful templates and tools that you can take advantage of no matter what you're creating a canva pro subscription includes access to over 75 million premium photos, videos, audio, and graphics. I've been playing around a little bit with the editing in my videos, so a lot of the fun overlays you might have seen recently, and even in this video were made with Canva Pro. I also love using it to create YouTube thumbnails. If you're a YouTuber, this is a must have for you. They have a bunch of different templates. So it's especially helpful if you're just starting out or you don't have a specific style for your thumbnails yet because you can choose one of the thumbnail options and then just switch out the text in the photos. I also love the background remover tool. I used to have to go to a separate website every time I wanted to remove the background, but now I can just click a button in Canva Pro and it easily removes the background. I also love using Canva Pro for Instagram stories. Sometimes I'll share different different sale information or makeup deals or even if my video just went live and this just makes it so easy to design something fun. There are so many options for social media but even if you're not on social media or that's not something that necessarily appeals to you, there are a ton of other ways to use Canva Pro. You can actually use it to create a professional looking resume. I know a lot of people are on the hunt for new jobs right now so this is a great way to set yourself apart especially if you aren't sure how to even format a resume because you can just go in with one of their templates and fill in your info. You can use it for other fun things to like to create invitations for a birthday party or weekly calendars to print out and use at home. There are so many options. They have a ton of time saving tools that make everything very simple and easy to use. And it also just helps with the creative process. So it really is just the best, most quick and easy, affordable way to design anything that you want. You can design like a pro with Canva Pro. You can try Canva Pro free for 45 days. If you go to canva.me slash Andrea Matiliano, this is such a great way to test out all of the features and see what they have to offer. And it's a great deal because you're able to design whatever you want. So I definitely recommend checking it out. I'll put the link in the description box below so you guys can try it out. But thanks again to Canva for sponsoring today's video. So let me start with a few cheek products. So I do have some of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes in my collection, and these are expensive. They retail for $40. $40 for a blush is a lot. I actually haven't purchased a new one of these in a long time because I have found other blush formulas that I really like that are less expensive. But the reason why I was so drawn to these for such a long time, and I do still wear them, is because the formula is very lightweight. It almost gives your skin this like lit from within glow. They have a blush color mixed with like a brightening powder, but they don't look powdery or heavy on the skin at all. They do look really, really nice and soft on the skin, but you have to pay quite a bit to get one of these hourglass blushes. So a few months ago, I tried this formula from Catrice. These are their blush boxes, and these are the glowing multicolor blushes. They also have blushes that are completely one shade. So if you don't prefer multicolored blushes that have a couple of different shades in them that you swirl together, you might prefer for just their regular blush boxes, which I also like. But these are basically spot on dupes for Hourglass, even the shades that I picked out. So I'll do side by side swatches for you guys, but these look so similar on the cheeks. They give your skin that beautiful lit from within glow. I would say the Catrice blushes could be built up to be more pigmented than Hourglass, but you can also go in with a large fluffy brush or a light hand to get more of a sheer application. 
Also, these Catrice blushes don't have any shimmer in them. Some of the Hourglass blushes don't have shimmer, just like their regular ambient lighting collection, but they also have the ambient strobe lighting blushes that do have shimmer in them. So if you don't like shimmer, these will be a great alternative for that reason as well. And these are $6. Now I will say when you first get the Catrice blush, it does feel a little bit hard when you initially apply the product. So I would say just maybe work off that top layer. You don't need to go in and scrape it off. Just take your finger and swirl around the blush a few times. And once you use it a few times you really get like such a good formula underneath they are pretty powdery but they're very blendable and like I said they're a little bit more pigmented than hourglass so I don't mind a little bit of powderiness especially because you get such a similar effect on the cheeks and I think that these are such a good alternative and they're six dollars now this is something I have touched on in a few of my recent videos but in case you guys didn't catch those videos I wanted to include it in this video as well because this is such a good alternative to the hourglass powders in general and this is a three-in-one so this is the Ulta Beauty three-in-one cheek palette now they do have three different options I have a California sunlight but they also have I think a warmer toned option and a deeper option as well and this formula can also be built up so I'll show you the swatches when you swatch this it does look a little bit lighter but if you go in with a brush and layer it up you can get more pigment and like I said there are two other shade options as well this one just works the best for my personal skin tone this is probably the closest hourglass dupe that I've tried I mean I would say that those Catrice blushes do look very similar but these even look like hourglass products in the pan and you do get a bronzer a blush and a highlighter it's funny because the hourglass bronzers never really worked for me this bronzer has a very similar texture but I like it better it's very very blendable it looks amazing on the skin and this highlighter is so similar to a shade that I was using in my hourglass ambient lighting palette so I have this palette that has a few different powders it has this shade incandescent light which is kind of like a lighter baked highlighter the shade in here gives the same effect on the skin and I think that I almost like it a little bit better because I feel like these have slightly more pigment hourglass powders are known for being very light people have been asking for deeper shades for a long time at this point and if you are one of those people who doesn't want to purchase from hourglass for that reason maybe check out these Ulta Beauty palettes because they do have one that is significantly deeper I feel like lip plumpers are so trendy right now they've been around for a while but I feel like every Everyone is testing out lip plumpers and releasing lip plumpers. Buxom did release one that I tried recently. It is the Buxom Plump Shot Collagen Infused Lip Serum. This one retails for $25. And I did test it out in a recent YouTube video, and I think that it does work well. It's a little bit more gentle than a few of the other lip plumpers out there, so you do feel a little bit of tingling, but it's not as intense as some other brands. And I do feel like you notice a little bit of smoothing and your lips are slightly plumped. Now the downside of this one is obviously the price. It's a little bit more expensive, but it also turned my lips bright pink. In the bottle, it's a clear lip product, but after a few minutes, my lips were super bright. And I just don't typically like that effect because I don't love pink lipstick in general. And if I'm wearing something on top, I feel like you can kind of notice it unless it is a really opaque lip product. Essence actually released one recently that I think is a really good alternative. This one is the What The Fake Plumping Lip Filler. This one says that it has hyaluronic acid and this one retails for $5. So it is a fifth of the price of the Buxom Lip Plumper. But what I like about this one is that it is more of a subtle lip plumper as well. So I think the reason why the Buxom one could appeal to you is because it's not quite as strong as maybe the Too Faced Lip Injection. You get a little, a little bit of a plumping effect, but it's not overly uncomfortable like some lip plumpers feel like you're getting stung on the lips by a bee that's not the case with either one of these so if you're someone who is looking for a gentle lip plumper that's not too strong I think you'll like both of these formulas but like I said the essence one is five dollars it is significantly less expensive and I feel like it is very very similar to the buxom one except for the fact that it doesn't turn my lips bright pink which I love now I didn't share a lot of lip product dupes in this video I feel like I can usually find a good amount of dupes but there is just one that I really wanted to highlight because recently I have fallen in love with the Tower 28 Shine On Milky Lip Jelly Glosses. I think that's the name. It's really long, but these look really nice on the lips. They retail for $14 each, which I don't think is a bad price point, especially for a high-end brand. I feel like Tower 28 keeps it a little bit more affordable. So I'm not opposed to these at all. In fact, I love them. I do have a few of them in my collection. I have one full-size gloss, and then I have a few minis that I got in a holiday lip set. And I'm not saying I won't buy these in the future because they are really, really nice, but I definitely found a more affordable dupe that I feel like looks and 
feels identical on the lips. I've always said they're kind of like a lip oil lip gloss hybrid. So you get a really beautiful glossy effect, but they feel like a lip oil. So they're very, very comfortable. Recently, I've been wearing these a lot and I realized that they're pretty much interchangeable on the lips. These are the ColourPop Luxe Lip Oils. When these first came out, I wasn't sure if I loved them because they didn't really have any pigment, but I've come to appreciate that because you can wear them on their own if you just want a light wash of color or you can layer them on top of lipstick. These are so nice. I've tried so many lip oils recently and some are very oily and some are a little bit more glossy. And I would say the Tower 28 and the ColourPop lip oils are a little bit more glossy. They both have a little bit more of a thin formula compared to some of the other lip oils that I've tried and they give your lips just the most beautiful, glossy, shiny finish. I actually have two shade dupes as well. So not only is the formula very similar, I would say that these shades are pretty much identical on the lips. So I'll swatch them for you guys so you can see what they look like. The ColourPop Luxe lip oils are $8, Tower 28 are 14, and the ColourPop Luxe lip oils come with like slightly more products. So price per ounce, they're still a better deal. The ColourPop Luxe lip oils also come in a bunch of shades. So like I said, I still like the Tower 28 ones, but if you've been wanting to try those out and you don't want to spend $14 on a lip oil, the ColourPop ones give you a very, very similar effect and they feel pretty much identical on the lips. I really can't tell a difference. Like if these were the same packaging, I don't know that I would be able to tell which one was ColourPop and which one was Tower 28. I have been raving nonstop about the Bite Beauty Upswing Full Volume Mascara. I love this so much. It gives your lashes a ton of volume, a ton of drama. And it's funny because when this first came out, I didn't love it because I felt like the wand was a little bit too big. It is a messy mascara, so I feel like it's kind of high maintenance. And you know, that might not appeal to a lot of people for that reason specifically because you have to be very careful when you apply it. But I liked it enough to repurchase it, which is kind of rare for me. I'm definitely a drugstore mascara fan, and typically I won't repurchase is a high-end mascara unless it's on sale. But I did recently repurchase this one because I loved it that much. So e.l.f. recently released their Big Mood Mascara. And when they were initially sneak peeking photos of this, I said in a Purchaser Pass video, I think that's going to be a dupe for the Bite Beauty Mascara because the wand looks similar, the claim sounded kind of similar. So I decided to purchase it. I've been testing it out. And the mascaras do look so similar, like even the outer packaging. They both kind of have like that metallic sheen. Obviously the e.l.f. one is purple, but they do give me like a similar vibe. And then the wands are even more similar than I thought they were going to be. They're both like large oversized hourglass shaped wands. The difference is the e.l.f. wand has longer bristles. So I feel like you don't get the intense clumping that you get with the Bite Beauty mascara. It almost does a better job at like separating the lashes. You still get volume and length and drama, but it's not clumpy drama. And I'm someone who doesn't necessarily mind clumpy lashes because I feel like it gives me the drama that I want. But I know that is the reason why a lot of people don't like the Bite Beauty mascara. So if you want a very similar effect with less clumping, definitely try the e.l.f. Big Mood. And I think that this one would actually appeal to a lot of people more than the Bite Beauty one. This one is $7, Bite Beauty is $28. So Bite Beauty is four times the cost of the e.l.f. mascara. Urban Decay makes one of my favorite eyeliner formulas. I love the 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencils. These are so beautiful. They have a ton of shades to choose from, but they're expensive. They're $22. And if you're buying a shade that you wear all the time, like a brown or a black or whatever color it is, $22 isn't outrageous because these will last you a very, very long time. But if you're buying a shade you don't wear all the time, like a blue or a green, or again, whatever color it is for you, that might feel like a lot of money to spend on one eyeliner. These are actually better than the Urban Decay liners and these are $5. They're significantly better. They are the best eyeliners that I've ever tried. These are the LA Girl Shockwave Metallic Liners. Now they don't have quite as many shades as Urban Decay, which is obviously a downside, but I do feel like they have enough. They have like colorful shades, neutral shades, lighter shades, deeper shades. I have two, I have Ocean and Dragon. I'm wearing Ocean in my waterline today. These are so creamy. They glide on effortlessly. They're pigmented, they're rich, and they stay in place. The Urban Decay liners do stay in place for me, but they don't stay in place as well as these LA Girl liners. These will not move throughout the day. They are just the best eyeliners that I've ever tried. So I do plan on picking up additional shades, and honestly, I would just recommend saving your money 
skipping over Urban Decay and picking up LA Girl. Let's talk about a few eyeshadow palettes. So sticking with LA Girl, I have an LA Girl eyeshadow dupe for a Natasha Denona palette. Again, I've talked about this on my channel, but I don't know if all of you guys caught that video. I know not everyone watches every video, which is why I wanted to mention it again, because this really is such a good dupe. Now the Natasha Denona Zendo palette has definitely gotten a lot of mixed reviews. I really like her $65 palette. $65 is still a lot to spend on a palette. So when you're spending that much, you expect for it to perform well. I mean, these days when I'm spending $10 on a palette, I expect for it to perform well because I feel like eyeshadow formulas as a whole have come a very long way. But when it comes to this palette in particular, there are a lot of inconsistencies. Some of the shadows are great and they're flawless. They look amazing on the eyes, but some of them are patchy and hard to blend. They're uneven, they're lacking pigment, and I'm just not impressed by it as a whole. For $65, I do hold it to a little bit of a higher standard and I don't want to experience you know, a lot of patchiness. So a bunch of you guys told me that LA Girl actually released a dupe for this. Now, I don't think this was a dupe on purpose. I don't think it's a copy cop, copy cat palette because I think they were released around the same time. I honestly just think this color story is pretty trendy this summer. I could be wrong, but I do think it takes a lot more time for a brand to create a concept manufacture it and release it, especially because LA Girl isn't a brand that has like super constant releases like ColourPop. You know, they kind of brag how they can take an idea from like concept to creation in a few days, but I don't think that's the case for a lot of other brands. So again, I don't think this was necessarily meant to be a copycat palette. I could totally be wrong because I don't work for LA Girl, but if you're looking for something that has a similar color story at a less expensive price point, I do recommend this one. It retails for $15.99, but typically you can get this brand on sale on Ulta Beauty's website. Now, there aren't necessarily spot on dupes for every single color, but a lot of the shades are very, very similar. So I will swatch the similar shades next to each other, or I'll swatch the palettes next to each other so you can see what the color stories look like. Now, if you haven't tried LA Girl shadows, the formulas are different. LA Girl matte shadows are not necessarily as pigmented as Natasha Denona shadows, but they're more buildable. So you can start off a little bit more subtle and then lightly build them up for something slightly more intense. So that is something to note. They are pretty powdery, but I, I almost prefer that because sometimes you don't want intense pigmentation right away. You want something a little bit softer that you can build up to your desired pigmentation. So if that is you, I think this palette might actually be a better option, especially if you are someone who just has a hard time with eyeshadow. Eyeshadow can be hard. Today, my eyeshadow was so difficult. I ended up like taking it off, applying it again, and sometimes it's just not an easy process. So if you are someone who has a hard time blending eyeshadows, you might prefer this formula. Now I would say the metallic shadows in this palette are better than the metallics in the Zendo palette, which says a lot because I love Natasha Denona's metallic formula. I think it's one of the best out there, but there are a couple of really beautiful shades in here that you don't get in the Zendo palette. So overall, I'm just impressed by the quality of this one. When it comes down to it, I would recommend this one over the Zendo palette for sure. I like a lot of Natasha Denona palettes, but I don't think Zendo is worth $65. I say save your money and try this one instead. I do have two palette alternatives to share with you guys that I actually think might be a better option for you if you were kind of looking at these, but you didn't want them. So I personally love the updated Urban Decay Naked palettes. I know not everyone feels that way, but Naked Honey is one of my favorites, and I also love Naked Wild West. When it comes to the Urban Decay Naked palettes, they tend to be a little bit more subtled, or they tend to be a little bit more subtle. I was going to say subdued and subtle. How do I explain it? They're like good everyday palettes because you can create a look without it being too over the top. So they do appeal to a lot of people who might not necessarily want super intense eyeshadow. But I think a lot of the time people don't buy these because they're looking for something a little bit more intense or unique or interesting. So I feel like I have two ColourPop palettes that are more interesting versions of these that I wanted to share with you guys just in case you weren't interested in trying these but the color story kind of appealed to you. So let's start with this one. Naked Wild West is one of my favorites because you do get some pretty greens, some red tones, and then you also get a bunch of neutrals. Like I said, this color story is really trendy right now. A lot of brands are doing like warm tones with pops of blue and then like golds, maybe silvers, a couple of neutrals. If you don't like the Naked formula or you want something a little bit more saturated than this one, then I 
think you might like the ColourPop Lush Life Palette. Now this one does have a couple of shades that are spot on dupes, but then a lot of them are like slightly more pigmented versions of shades that you see in Naked Wild West. I am wearing this palette on my eyes today with one shade from the Naked Wild West. I actually just meant to use the Lush Life Palette on my eyes, but my blending just got out of control and my eyeshadow just needed to be toned down a little bit. So I actually went in with like this gray toned taupey shade in the crease <laughs> yeah in the crease to kind of tone things down a little bit but this lush life palette is amazing what i like about this is i feel like it kind of takes the best parts of the naked wild west palette and almost amps them up a little bit so you get really intense orangey reds really gorgeous greens and blues and then just a couple of neutrals so if you have a lot of neutral eyeshadow in your collection and you feel like you don't need the five or six neutrals you get in naked wild west this might actually be a fun way to incorporate those pops of red and orange and green into your routine without buying like a full 54 dollars naked palette I already know this next one is not a new discovery. I'm sure somebody somewhere has mentioned this on YouTube, but this is a new palette to my collection. So I have owned the Urban Decay Naked Honey for a long time, but I just recently picked up the ColourPop Good as Gold palette. And I have been reaching for this one a lot. I love gold eyeshadow. It's one of my favorite colors to wear. So I've always been able to get a lot of use out of Naked Honey because there are a bunch of beautiful golden shades, but also some really fun neutrals. The only thing that this palette is missing for me are just some really beautiful textures so you do get gold eyeshadows but all of these are like just like a true metallic shadow not necessarily anything is super interesting or eye-catching on the eyes other than the shades I think the shades are beautiful so I don't have any complaints about this palette but sometimes I feel like I just want to elevate my look a little bit so if that is you I think that you might prefer the ColourPop good as gold palette because the color stories are very very similar so if you're just buying this based on the color stories this is $18 versus $54 for Urban Decay but this one has so many different textures going on so you do get like your staple mattes and metallics but you also get satins and then you get these really gorgeous textured metallics that look so interesting on the eyes I am someone who is always looking for like a really interesting shimmer or metallic because I feel like a lot of them just kind of blend together and all look very similar but this one has super shocks it does have some shimmers that have glitter mixed in a couple of pressed metallics foils and then you also get some mattes with shimmer mixed in as well so what I am doing like a golden neutral look I've just really been enjoying this one lately because I feel like it looks so interesting on the eyes the good as gold palette is great I know this was released a while ago I just recently picked it up because ColourPop was having a sale and I'm glad that I did because I know I will get a ton of use out of this especially heading into fall and the holiday season these are my favorite shades to wear the last product I want to mention is a dupe for a high-end eyeshadow stick so I've tried a lot of shadow sticks this year I feel like cream products are obviously very trendy this year but that also includes cream eyeshadow sticks and cream eyeshadow crayons about face shadow sticks are really pretty they have a bunch of really beautiful colors but I just didn't like the actual formula I felt like it wasn't worth the price point this is something that almost looks a little bit streaky when you apply it on the eyes they don't necessarily have a ton of pigment and if you build them up you can get them to look somewhat intense on the eyes but once you blend them out you lose a lot of that pigmentation so I feel like you have to really layer them up and build them up even more what I don't love about this is the fact that it doesn't feel like it dries down completely. So when you blink your eye, it's almost like you can feel your eyelid sticking to itself. And then throughout the day, I feel like the rest of the color just fades away. So for the price point, I just felt like there wasn't a lot of longevity and it was sticky, a little bit uncomfortable. And I just wasn't really impressed by the formula as a whole. ColourPop actually released a shadow stick formula that I feel like is similar but better. These actually have a lot of pigment. So if you are looking for a more intense shadow stick, I would recommend the ColourPop ones. I also feel like the ColourPop ones are maybe a little bit more smooth. So they do blend out well, but as you blend them out, they hold their pigmentation a little bit better. So they do look a little bit more intense on the eyes. And once these ones dry down, they stay in place. And again, they don't have that sticky feeling when you blink your eye.
Elf also makes a shadow stick formula that I like, but I don't feel like that formula is quite as similar as the Halsey formula. Because the Halsey formula, or I guess about face, Halsey's the creator or the person behind the brand, because this formula is a little bit more sticky, I do feel like it stays in place really well on the waterline. So if you mainly use these eyeshadow crayons on the waterline, you might like it for that purpose. But if you're looking for a good option for the lid, I would recommend ColourPop instead. I think it's just a little bit softer, more blendable, and then it does dry down a little bit better. So that's everything I wanted to share with you guys in today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope today's video was helpful for you guys. If you were considering any of these high-end products but looking for a more affordable alternative, let me know in the comment section below if you guys know of any drugstore dupes or alternatives that I should check out because I would love to check them out. And again, you guys can try Canva Pro free for 45 days. I'll put the link in the description box below, but it's canva.me slash Andrea Matiliano. So if you guys try it out, let me know what you think, but I'll see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye.